The Bible is considered one of the most important religious and historical documents consisting of a series of stories told throughout the time. Stories that have been distorted from its original meanings over centuries. The Bible has often been used for political gain or interpreted by religious leaders to influence. To influence what, you wonder? Influence behaviors, to influence decisions, and even influence the human mind. But here at Shifting Religious Concepts, our message is simple. Seek the deeper meanings that the stories of the Bible were always meant to tell. Read, interpret, and understand the Bible and its contents as the great storytellers of the past intended it. Now is the time to capture the depth of not only who, but what God truly is. Now is the time to shift from the ideas of identifying yourselves as sheep, but as powerful, living, thriving gods yourself. Shift into the power of not discovering, but uncovering what God created you to be. Right here with SRC, as we began to unpack the secret knowledge that was intended to be shared with everyone. Good morning, good rising SRC family. I am Anala D, your host for today. And always we are here to unpack knowledge and wisdom. And we do the we use the Bible and other publications to do that. We have with us today Mark Thomas, who is our contributor and editor. We have Pastor Archie Sanders with us today. Dr. Griffo is not with us today. He's out today and he is taking a long deserved rest. We have Ms. Tamisha Burgess with us today as well. And of course, Brother Lavelle Rosser. And as always, they are ready to share their knowledge with you. Now, we've been discussing the book of Numbers and we're going to continue to have that conversation today, but we're going to just shift just a little bit today because we want to really get into talking about the numbers and patterns of the numbers in your life, in your everyday life. Now, if any of our guests feel led as we start to unpack what we're going to talk about today, please raise your hand, unmute yourself, and I will call on you and you can ask your question or just make a brief statement regarding the topic. Now, this is our seventh episode in this series, The Book of Numbers, What Does It All Mean? And I suggest right now that you contact your family and your friends, send them the link that you use to get on to this broadcast because this is going to be so good and you don't want anyone to miss it. So let's get to work. Now, before we move on into our topic today, and, and remember I said that we're gonna talk about today, do we possess patterns of numbers that got us in this earth journey? We're gonna really dig into that a lot more today. We've been talking about the book of numbers, but we wanna really get in on that and talk about the numbers themselves and how they affect our lives and how, we, uh, how the numbers may even affect how we think. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark Thomas, who is going to just give us a brief summary on what we discussed on last week. Okay, good morning. Hello, hello to everybody. Uh, just real quick, we'll summarize last week, which was on the 19th of September. And in that really outstanding presentation, the SRC panel went in-depth on chapters 16, 17, and 18 of the Book of Numbers. The panel, led by Anala D, covered a whole range of topics from donuts. In case you weren't here, you're going to have to go back and see that episode to know what I'm talking about. But yeah, from donuts 
uh, to different levels of consciousness and how to manage them and our thoughts. So uh, it was a really interesting show. SRC wants to remind the audience that this great turmoil that we are talking about in the book of Numbers uh, that among the Israelites as they continue their exodus is symbolic of our own inner struggles bet uh, between our lower nature and our higher consciousness. And uh, when, for instance, the 250 princes, which uh, princes, which we talked about at length, rose up against Moses and Aaron in chapter 16, we know this represents our own conflicts as we travel towards a higher consciousness or, or as the ancients so beautifully put it, as they said, to the promised land. Uh, really, there was so much good information in our pre in that present uh, that was presented last week. But I thought the closing statements by our contributors were really something special and encapsulated what our mission at SRC is. Uh, Brother Archie started that off by reminding us not to settle for the Bible as it is often taught. Do your own investigation. He and Anala discuss how many of the rituals in the church today are meant to stifle our imaginations and to keep us from the deeper understandings. And Brother Lavelle Rouser spoke of the duality of our psyche. He brought up us back to the 250 princes and why the number seven that it represents numerologically is where we drop our fear and how important that is. Uh, really a great summation there by Lavelle. Uh, Dr. Griffo, by the way, we miss uh, miss Dr. Griffo today. We'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll see him next uh, soon. I, I hope very soon. Uh, Dr. Griffo then spoke, among many things, to the significance of animal sacrifice and how this relates to the SRC message. Finally, Brother Bert Griffo talked about temporary desires as opposed to our uh, eternal desires. Uh, so this is just a small fraction of these really excellent summations. So if you didn't see them or fully catch what our contributors were saying, I urge you to go back uh, and watch the YouTube videos. If you're pressed for time, go to the summations at the, uh, towards the end, you, the last 15 or 20 minutes of, of each show has uh, summations by our uh, panelists that are usually really, really good to watch. But uh, while you're there, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, of course. So that's it, Anala. I'm gonna hand it back to you. We're gonna see what this show brings us. Okay, there we are. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mark Thomas, for taking us back and reminding us of what we learned last week. And also thank you for reminding us of those donuts that Dr. Griffo talked about on last week. So now what we'd like to do is what we like for, Doc, uh, for Pastor Archie to just give us a little preview on what we were taught about the book of Numbers as it relates to, do we possess patterns of, of numbers that guide us in this earth journey? What did the church teach? And then once Pastor Archie does that, we're gonna then move on to Brother Lavelle Rosser, who is going to lead us into a conversation about the patterns that we possess in our bodies that serve to guide us in this earth's journey. Pastor Archie. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you. Now we're gonna. Um, I, I really, as I read, begin to read uh, Numbers chapter eighteen. There, there's a lot in there, and um, as I remember, as I taught coming up through the years, basically, uh, it lays out. As I said, it, it's a, it's a pattern there, but it lays out the way that we are to uh, respect the priests at, during that time who, who are now the, the preachers and the apostles and the ministers and that's who are they considered, to, they are considered to be now uh, the ministers. Uh, and the book of Numbers 18 began to show you, begin to tell us uh, what God was telling Aaron to do and Moses to do and how they were to receive the, the tithes and the offerings. And this is a big chapter because uh, one of the things that really caught me there and, and, and we used to, uh, when I used to teach concerning uh, the tithes, the offering and uh, the sacrifices, uh, God told them that it would be forever, generation to generation. And we we taught that, 
that it will be from generation to generation, tithes should be paid. And uh, but there's a lot more studying to this here. Uh, because numbers, even though it was a long time ago, a lot of people still hold that to the light now and and tell you that, oh yeah, you got to pay your tithes and this and that. that that's in there, but you got to understand uh, where this came from and who it was talking about. But this book, here, this particular book, chapter 18, it lays out a lot of what, uh, how the priests lived how they were to live they couldn't have they didn't get land because they got ties from everyone and since they got ties from everyone got ties from the israelite they the levites didn't get land because so now you give ties of that so you give ties of the ties according to what was in this book here but now as far as the number is concerned uh whoo <laughs> it's a lot. I, I think uh, 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 Brother Lavelle probably can explain a little more about the numbers, but uh, as far as this chapter here, this chapter set it up uh, for us to understand how we were to give to those who didn't actually have land, which were the priests, and uh, but they did a lot of work according to the way the tabernacle was laid out. But yeah, that, this, this chapter uh, there's a lot in there concerning how we are to give to those priests. And I'm sure the numbers will uh, be a little something different uh, from Brother uh, Rouser there. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that, Pastor Archer. So we remember that Dr. Griffo talked about tithes and what that really meant. We were tithing, we were supposed to be tithing to ourselves and not necessarily to someone else. But of course, religion wanted us to not only follow them like sheep, but wanted us to make sure and continue to give them all of the tithes. And if you look at it today, you have the people, are the leaders of the church, you know, they say, well, you know, since they don't have any land, give them tithes, but they have land and they're getting all the tithes at the same time. But when we think about it and we really dig deep and understand what all this meant, we were supposed to be tithing to the God within us and tithing to our seven and a tithe wasn't even about money per se. It wasn't even about that. So with that being said, I want brother Rosser to take us into why do we possess patterns? We know we possess patterns because we've had that conversation within our bodies, uh, within our, within uh, SRC. We know we possess a pattern of numbers that guide us into this earth journey. And so one of the things we're going to do today is once Brother Lavelle leads us into that conversation. Then we're going to actually talk about some of the numbers that um, provide the, the positive, the negative, and the destruct destructive behaviors on how we think. So, with that being said, let uh, we're going to ask Brother Lavelle Rosser now to to open up and tell us: Do we possess a pattern of numbers within our body that guides us in this Earth's journey? And Thank you, Anala, and good morning, everyone, SRC. Uh, yes, we, we do um, have a pattern of numbers uh, based on the time of our birth. Uh, that's why uh, birthdays are very, very important, not just for a nominal reason, but for a, a greater understanding of the experience that we are having uh, as souls on this planet. At the inception or at the date and time of our birthday, uh, we begin that pattern. And this pattern is uh, known in numerology as your life path or your destiny. And this destiny or life path follows you throughout your entire life. It is best to know about your destiny in life because it is standing in front of you each and every day of your life. If you are aware of it, it makes it better for you to understand the ins and outs, the rudiments, the ups and downs of why we experience or why certain things happen. It's never anything that's being done against you per se, but we do lack an understanding as to why we 
experience them on a daily basis. These patterns range from moment to moment to very long periods. Uh, we call these very long periods cycles. Uh, some of the cycles range uh, from uh, one year uh, to uh, nine years to 28 years to 36 years to 40 years. It, it, it depends on how you want to look at it and how you want to ascertain uh, the knowledge, uh, the spiritual knowledge from this. Our Bible, and especially the book of Numbers, is very well coded uh, with numbers, of course. And it's, it's, it's fortunate for us to know about these numbers because when we understand these numbers, then we understand the patterns, then we understand the laws by which we are under and by which we should allow ourselves to be governed and for others to be governed too, so each and every one of us can be in agreement, harmony, in accord in this life that we live. So much is in discord and disarray right now that no one seems to know really what to do. So anything goes for the time being as it is right now. But, but take for example, the, the, the number 40 to 40 years or the number four itself. The number four, or 40 uh, represents having order in one's life. 40, 40 would mean we need to have order within our community. You know, corporations have what they call long range planning. They have a five year plan, a 10 year plan, a 15, 20, 25 year plan, 40, 50, some even have a hundred year plan as to what they are going to do. This is because they have established some sort of order. Families that I know of have plans. They have plans for the time that children are born. They have a plan for their child. They can look at that child. They can read and study the, the name and the number of their birthday to determine what area or what facet in life this child is going to be uh, great at. We are all here to be great. We are not, we have not been sent here nor placed here to not be great, to be unsuccessful, to be a scourge on society. It's, it's the lack of knowledge, okay? Our people suffer because of lack of what? Lack of knowledge, okay? The reason why we are such a, a disarray right now in our society. So that's why I'm a very uh, strong proponent and a very stickler for uh, studying numbers and knowing numbers. I know for a very long time uh, in my Baptist background and Baptist religion, uh, when I first wanted to encounter, when I first encountered uh, numerology and numbers and the study of numbers, uh, it was frowned upon and looked upon as being something very uh, wicked and evil. But as I pursued it, more and more, I realized that it wasn't something that was evil. It was something that was kept from the masses of the people, while those who are in nearly absolute power control utilize this each and every single day of the year. I would give you a perfect example. Uh, the Vatican Church over in Vatican City. They utilize numerologists and astrologists 24 seven. There is no less than 36 people that they have, okay? At any given time, they have them in eight hour shifts, three eight hour shifts every day, 36 people, okay? These 36 people are charting not only the stars to see what's going to happen, but they're charting the numbers to see what is the trend? What, what, what is the behavior? What is the mindset? This is being used to control people. If I thought that it was being used to enlighten people, I would say so, but I don't see it that way. So that lets me know, and I'm sharing with you for you to have this knowledge, that what we see in our society now, a great deal of it is being used to control the mass minds of the people.
and they utilize this because there is strength in numbers, there is power in numbers, and we need to uh, know not just the quantitative side, but the spiritual significance in numbers. I had the good fortune back in 1966 of being introduced uh, into numbers by an instructor that I had. And when I asked her about, was this something evil? She started to explain to me and give me reasons as to why it wasn't. And from there, I formulated my own idea and my own opinions. And all I ask each and every one of you is to do the same. But for some reason, numbers are hidden and they're well hidden, but they're in our book of numbers and they're in the Bible throughout. We have already dealt with revelations. We are dealing with uh, the book of numbers right now. And these powers uh, will reveal to us uh, what it is that we need to do, what it is that we need to know. And especially, I'm a very strong proponent in terms of raising uh, the thoughts, the awareness, the consciousness, and the love for our children out here because they come into a world where they are very, very, very confused as to what is and what is. Thank so, you so much. Uh, we need to go to commercial break, but we, we're going we're gonna to come right back because I know that Brother Lavelle Rosser has so much more to share along with our other contributors. So we want to take a, a, a break just for a moment, go to a commercial break, and then we're going to come right back and we're going to continue this conversation because it is so, so powerful as you get to understand yourself and about the patterns of numbers that are in your body. So just stay with us and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Thank you so much for staying with us during that commercial break. Brother Lovell Rosser was talking about the world in which we live in and the fact that our children right now are so confused. And I know all of us see that all the time. And when we, this panel and I have been in discussion about numbers and our live numbers and things like that, we often say that we wish that we understood or that someone would have taught us about numerology when we were growing up. Just imagine how different we could be if you understood yourself, if you understood why you were sent here into this earth realm. But more than that, if you understood the positives and the negatives and the destructive behavior sometimes that even your numbers can uh, will shed light on, you will understand how to detour, how to make changes within your life if you know more about yourself. And as a Brother Rasta was saying, people study us. They know more. And I, and I will say this forever now that I understand this. It is a shame that people of government and places like that know more about us than we know about ourselves. For an example, when I worked for the Department of Transportation in Florida, and, and, and Brother Lavelle was talking about how they do five-year studies and all those things. We had five and 10 work uh, programs, five and 10-year work programs, where they, the government, already knew where they were going to build a new road. They knew what budget they were going to, uh, uh, they were budgeting for certain things in, in the next three or four years. Now, guess what? People, what they would do is they would go down there and ask to see a copy of that five or 10 year work program because it's public knowledge. And guess what they would do from that? They would prepare themselves to be in position to take advantage of some of those contracts. And those are the things that we must learn to do 
so you so it's all about planning and if we know who we are and know what those numbers mean and i mean in our lives we can also plan for our future more effectively as well so with uh, with that being said uh, uh the, i mean uh, brother lavelle finish breaking that and unpacking that for us unless any of the other contributors want to say anything regarding okay i see that uh, mark thomas just 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 uh took off his mute so he want to add to that yeah uh uh, Brother Lavelle, I'm I'm curious for the for the lay person who doesn't know a lot about numbers. Do do numbers relate directly to reality to to the fabric of reality and how how it, reality affects us? Is it a description of reality? Uh, very much so. Uh, numbers uh, play into everything that. Exist in our life from creation till till now. Uh, there's this there, there is a saying that that Pythagoras had, who was a master of, of, of the study of numbers, that all life is numbers. That was one of his great sayings, and that is a saying that is uh, esoterically used uh, by uh, many many different uh, and various secret societies throughout uh, the world, be it in Asia, be it in China, be it in the United States, South America, Central America, or whatever. So it does deal with reality. The, 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 the numbers, they, they yield and give off and, and, and they're measured with a certain uh, vibration. An example would be, if you have a child who is born let's say on the first of any month, people in power know that that child has a propensity of being a business leader or an entrepreneur. But for those people who don't know that, that child isn't given the guidance nor the advice to that. That child may be extraordinary and find it within themselves to become that. But from the onset that the time that a person is born, uh, Factors are already in existence to determine who and what you can be in this life. And so in dealing with the numbers from one to nine, because really there's only nine numbers. Mm -hmm. Everything beyond nine is what you call a compound number, which is nothing more than a combination of one of the first nine numbers. There's only nine numbers. And that's another great saying that Pythagoras said. There are only nine numbers, okay? <laughs> so we don't need to get all confused and out of wits about, oh, there's so many numbers, there's a vastness of numbers. No, there's only nine numbers. And so that simplifies a great deal. I love that, uh, Brother uh, Ross. I see that uh, Pastor Archie has his mute off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my I, I sort of have a question here. It, now, we have cycles. But I understand there are spheres also. Are spheres and cycles, do, are they basically the same or is that something different? You know, the spheres of life that we have. Yeah, yeah, the spheres of life represents uh, different levels. See, when we go through a cycle, in that cycle, we're supposed to be evolving. So it's a, it's a cycle, but it's also a spiral. Because what happens is that you're supposed to be moving up in spiritual consciousness, spiritual awareness, each and every step that you make. It's just like walking up a spiraling staircase. And so we, we go through what is known as nine cycles. And then you begin this nine cycles again. But the second time that you go through these nine cycles is on an elevated level. But if you have not allowed yourself, or if you have not chosen to elevate yourself, then you stay in, a, in that, what we call revolving door. And you just keep going in and out, in and out. And so that's why you see some people doing the same thing over and over again. They're 49 years old, and they're doing the same thing that they were doing when they were 18. Absolutely, that is so good, um, uh, brother, brother Rasa. And you know, and you can relate that back because I think, as you mentioned when we first started, you think about the children of Israel. So everybody think that the children of Israel were just kind of roaming around in the wilderness where they were, but they were roaming around in the wilderness in their own minds. 
So right. they were, they were, it wasn't that they were in some woods somewhere roaming around. They stayed right. in the same patterns. And you're right, Brother Lovell. I've seen people that, you know, you can go back sometimes to your own hometown and find people that what they were doing in, in high school, they're still doing the same thing right now today. They haven't, they haven't moved up to that, that next level. And that is so important that, but how can you move to the next level if no one has taught you that there are other levels that you can move to, how can a person, you know, you take your child when the child is, is little and you see them playing all kinds of games. Like I remember when I was growing up, I loved playing teacher and I had no one looked at me and said, wait a minute, let's see what's the patterns that are within this child. The reason why she loved playing the teacher role and doing those types of things. No one looks at that. And it is time that we start to look at our children and see and understand who they are so we can help them be the best that they are. And that doesn't just mean looking on the outside. We have to know what they were gifted with on the inside when they were sent here. Okay. Now, i like to touch on the fact, a very important thing that Pastor Archie talked about earlier uh, in, in um, Dr. Griffo talked about uh, previous uh, SRC sessions. Um, the 10%, the 10% tithing, as, as Dr. Griffo and, Dr. And, and Pastor Archie noted that it was really meant for us to take 10% of our time for us to focus on ourselves. When we focus ourselves, that becomes our fortune. Why does it become our fortune? Because the number 10 is known as the number of fortune that you're giving back to yourself. So all of us need to spend time with ourselves. But since we live in very, very fast paced lives, we seem like every minute of our waking day is accounting for, many of us don't seem to be able to have the fitting time to sit down and to go into silence and to commune with a higher source of life. And we're cutting ourselves off from our fortune, actually. Just taking 10% of your time out your day will make a difference. It will give back to you the fortune that you have. But we give so much of our fortune away to others who care very little about you. I absolutely love that. Commissioner, did you have something you want to share? Sort of. I mean, I guess you kind of read my mind a little bit. I was just um, reflecting on, you know, 2020 and this year, 2021. And um, we saw an increase of um, depression and anxiety and, and um, increase of, of suicidal rates. And a lot of people were saying how this has forced, this pause in the world has forced people to face themselves and how that's been the most difficult and most challenging and um, how this has really been more than anything, a psychological war with people at war with themselves and how there's been a war on the minds and the emotions of people. And um, the majority who understood what was happening on the planet really did take the time to face themselves, to be with themselves. And the people that had difficulty in doing that, um, difficulty facing themselves, um, were the ones that saw an increase in, in, their own, um, in their own psychological and emotional wars. And so we, see, we saw a lot of people kind of take to the internet and say, this is a time to really um, evaluate who you are and why you are here on this planet. You know, realizing whatever it is that you come here to do, whatever your purpose is. And the only way that you can do that is by taking advantage of this pause and looking at the man and the woman in the mirror. So uh, Mr. Lavelle, you hit the nail on the head there. Um, spending the time with yourself um, and finding out why you're here and doing that. We see people, um, and you see hiring signs all over the place. And I kind of chuckle 
because I say, wow, look at everybody who's quit their jobs because they're focusing on themselves. I mean, I've never seen so many hiring signs in my life on just fast food places. Just, you know, you drive and you see we're hiring. And I said, wow, those hiring signs are the symbols that people have come back home to themselves. So that's all. I love that. And you know, you're absolutely right. I see so many hiring signs and, and I'm, I am hoping as brother uh, Rosser mentioned, I'm hoping that people are taking the time and that means making the time, carving out that time of the day that you're going to just sit down and commune with self and the higher self, you know, going inside. And that is so important because the, the day, the day is as so as a person thinks so as they are. So you think about the, the day you can get caught up from the time you get up and start thinking about all the things you need to do and don't don't carve out the time for yourself so now what we're going to do right now we're going to take a quick break when we take that quick break we're going to come right back i see that you have something else you want to say we're going to save it to after this short commercial break and we come back we're going to going to hear from uh, tamisha burgess and then we're going to also talk about some of the different numbers and what they mean as it relates to the positive and the negative negative and the destructive side of us because we all have that dark and light within ourselves. So we'll be right back after this commercial break. to know what it's like behind the walls of a women's prison? Get Anala D's latest release, Screaming from the Inside, Incarcerated Women and the Journey to Awakening. Want to study Anala D's roadmap for getting released in two years after being sentenced to 20 years served to the door? Obtain her book, How to Prepare a Parole Package and Trigger Your Release from Prison Today. Thank you for staying with us while we went to that commercial break. So Tamisha, before we went to break, you had something important that you wanted to unpack and leave with the audience. What was that? Yeah, you're so intuitive because right before the break, you mentioned our uh, our light and dark selves. And I was going to say um, part of what I ob- observed, even in my own journey, and I'm sure maybe many others can say the same thing, in this pause and people facing themselves, and being forced to face themselves, it's as if people were able to adopt their higher selves, the problem and the fear wasn't facing our shadow selves, right? Facing that dark part of ourselves, that part we were taught to, you know, hide from the world, the parts we were taught to to mask, you know, um, to put on our corporate roles and our and our titles and, and just hide behind these ideas of what it looked like to be acceptable to the world. And so when you're forced to face yourself, it's the dark shadow parts that come up that people had a hard time looking at and and, and, uh, walking through what we call the dark night of the soul journey. So people were faced to, were forced to walk through their own darkness. This is a difficulty because people can put on this, 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 um, we're very good at, 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 at just, and we've been taught to be very good at wearing the masks of what we call the higher self, you know, this happy-go-lucky, everything is peaches and cream and rainbow and sunshine and butterflies. But um, the work is journeying through the dark of ourselves and facing that and integrating that. So yeah, you hit the nail on the head when you write before commercial. 
Okay, well, I'm glad that you 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 brought that out. I mean, because I am a number one. I'm a I'm a life path number one person, and you are absolutely right, Tamisha, when you talk about facing the dark part of ourselves. And I'm gonna I'm gonna share a little bit right now of what that number one is, and then I'm gonna ask that Lavelle Rosser. Then we'll kind of break this stuff down because maybe your number is something else. And if you are on today and you your life path number, you know what that is. You want us to break it down for you and tell you what that means, we can take some time and do that. But we're going to just call out a few numbers. We're going to do, we're going to do a one. And does anybody, any of the contributors want us to, um, to, to use one of their numbers? Let us know. We'll do that too. But so within us, we talked about the dark and the light. Within us, there is a positive. There is also, and we call it a positive, but we can say that that's the, that's the day. And we can say that the negative is the night, but not necessarily because just because it says it's negative doesn't mean that the night is something negative. It just means that you need to be aware and how to manage as you move through that darkness. When uh, Pastor Archie said once, when you go in a room and everything is dark, and if you just turn on the light, then you you, you have the light. And I, I believe that if you're calling it negative, all it just means that you need to be aware that it exists. And now you know how to a maneuver or how to manage it. And then there is a destructive. So now let me listen to this. It says, a uh, number one is active, ambitious, confident. They're a doer, individual, inventive, leader, and thinker. On the negative side or in the dark side, some of the things they need to be aware of is they can be very aggressive, lazy, self-conscious, selfish, and stubborn. And then on the destructive side, they can be a bully. They could be uh, uh, antagonistic, bigot, egotistical, put self first at all times. So when you realize that you have the possibilities of all of those traits right there, those are some of the things that when you see yourself going down that path, you may not want to do that. You may want to say, no, I want to be more like this. And now you can start to carve yourself because you realize that you possess those characteristics. And what you just said to me is that some people don't even realize that they have this or they just are unaware and they just go deeper and deeper into the forest or roam around in the wilderness for 40 years because they don't realize that they are have an egotistical, um, they're, they're egotistical. They don't see themselves. They're always looking at someone else, but not looking within themselves so that they can refine themselves and become that better that we were meant to be. So with that being said, uh, Brother Ross, break that down for that number one person. Break that positive and that negative and that other behavior that could destroy us when we if we're not aware about it. Okay. Well, the uh, the number one also it has a very uh, a positive effect. The symbolism with the number one has to do with the sun, and the sun shines on us all. Okay. And so the more that you receive the, 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 symbolis, the symbolism of the sun, the more that you realize that you must be a positive force for everyone that you come into contact with because people see you as being a person who knows or who has the answers or who is a leader. The destructive side of the number one would be that of a person as you had said before, who is lazy, shiftless, okay, does not follow through, okay, uh, lacks the confidence, lacks the energy, lacks the zeal to be forward and to think and rationalize, okay. Uh, they are incapable of not only governing others, but governing themselves. So they lack self-discipline. So that's, that's a, so that's some of the uh, destructive side. And even more destructive side is blaming others for the things that they need to be doing for themselves. Absolutely. And so when you, when you realize those types of things about yourself, when you realize that this is something that, that you could go down that path, a roam in that, in that wilderness for 40 years, what do you do? What, one of the things you want to do is say, okay, I don't want to um, put self first at all times. I don't want to be egotistical. This is what I want to be. So now you know how to, how to, how they say mold yourself. You know how to start to think differently. 
and put out a different type of energy. And it takes work. It takes a lot of work to do that. You just don't, it don't happen overnight. You first, you got to know who you are, what you're dealing with, and then you can work on yourself. Tamisha, I see that you're yeah. Um. Yes. For me, my personal journey was um, seeing my shadow parts, which could be uh, stubbornness, um, kind of my way or the highway sort of thing, and realizing, and this is just my own revelation, realizing that the integration for me was knowing and being able to apply the dark nature of my own self without shunning it. Because aggression is necessary, right? It has its place. But the work is knowing when to integrate that. Just like we were when we were discussing um, uh, the, the wandering through the wilderness and how, um, how what, was it some weren't able to cross over because they were too meek or something we were discussing. And we talked about integrating that part of yourself because the, the ancient creation was very intelligent in realizing that we could not be all light all the time, right? That it, when you look out even in the animal kingdom, we, you know, we're going to be very, very transparent here. We look out in the anim, animal kingdom, there is aggression because it has to be, right? right? But there's even a respect, even amongst the animal kingdom, kingdom even with all that aggression. <laughs> like um, I was watching, um, I can't remember, some documentary, and there was this watering hole, and all of the animals were drinking at this watering hole. I mean, the lions were not hunting the, the, the giraffes, the hyenas weren't hunting, the elephants, none of the, although they're all in this circle of life and they all, you know, there's a circle of life and this eats that and that eats this. When they were at that watering hole, they all drank. Nothing hunted the other because there was, there is an innate understanding and respect that when we're all here, there is a, there is a balance, so to speak. But when you were done at the watering hole, the game was back on, right? The lions are hunting again and whatever else. And I thought that was so powerful. And because we're all interconnected, right? Um, you know, we're, we're all in, interconnected. There is this adoption that humans have yet to fully integrate, which is this realization that the dark parts of ourselves is necessary and is needed once the emotional intelligence and the spiritual intelligence is gained and refined, we will know when to apply those parts of ourselves. And the mistake has been applying them when you feel you, when you, the mistake has been those who have been in competition with others, those who are attempting to, uh, well, competition or jealousy or uh, bitterness or just hate or just malice or whatever it is that you feel you don't have that someone else has, then you apply these dark qualities of yourself and that has been to our own detriment. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. And it's not just the integration or the getting rid of or trying to um, not be that. That is important. These parts of ourselves are, are necessary and we're created for a reason. But in order to be uh, or, or um, this idea of God-like, the, the truth is realizing that the idea of God in and of itself isn't, isn't um, all heavenly and all, um, uh, you know, just this whole idea of just this rainbow and sunshine. God in and of itself is both this aggressiveness and this, this omnipresence. So it's, it's really digging down into what that looks like and how to integrate that, how to refine our emotional intelligence to be able to, to operate from both. I love that, Tamisha. Thank you so much. I have, I see uh, Pastor Archie. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. And now, and, and, uh, that, that's wonderful uh, uh, coming from my, my niece. I, I, I just 
a question comes to mind, and uh, do we understand? Now we preach, we preach to people and tell them how to live and try to help them to, you know, come to understand life. Do we realize that the first 28 years of a person's life, they're still trying to discover who they are? That that first 28 years, and uh, you, that's why you find that that between those ages, a lot of time you find that people still act like little kids because they, they're still trying to develop. I think a uh, uh, brother uh, Russell said evolved. They have not fully evolved. And they're still trying to evolve. Wouldn't it be uh, a good idea to, to get people to understand the cycles of life and the spheres of life so that they can understand that where they're operating at, just like a big company. Uh, a big company use those those numbers to, to for their advantage. Wouldn't it be advantageous to us as people to get a better understanding of how we evolve and how we are, what steps and what cycles we are in? And then we make and see a little clearer you know, to that future. Absolutely. I love that, Pastor Archie, that, you know, we was taking us, you say 28 years, and you're right, because that is one of the, 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 the first cycles, 28 years or so to realize who we are. But with, like you said, wouldn't it be so much more helpful if we had some tool or something that would help us realize it so as we are evolving we'll know the things to watch out for the paths that we should walk on etc cetera, etc cetera. I, I i absolutely love that and i i uh uh brother rasta what are you what are you what are your comments on that oh I, I i appreciate pastor archie so much for bringing that up because uh one of the things that i was going to mention about is the uh the number seven and the sacredness of the number seven but if you notice, 28 is four times seven, okay? And when you're dealing with the number four times the seven, you're talking about your, 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 you're talking about your, uh, your growth. And number seven deals with sacredness and spirituality. And so by the time you hit uh, age 28, you should start to realize that, hey, I got to do something about my spirituality so that I can grow in society, so I can grow in this world, so I can be, all right? So these, these numbers, the symbolism of, of the numbers are, are, are very real and very telling. I mean, even, even psychologists and social scientists are aware of what our old, uh, um, what our old uh, ancestors used to say, uh, in, 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 in the church I grew up, they used to talk about the seven year itch. Every year, every seven years, you went through something, okay? And that was very real. So at age seven, age 14, age 21, and then boom, you hit age uh, 28. 28, that's critical. And 28 can be a time of your life which is very hard and very difficult to manage for a lot of people. I know it was with me. And people who I have count, uh, consulted with, they have said the same common thing. So it's a lot of significance in that, Brother Pastor Archie, and I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, let's, now, Brother Lavelle just mentioned the number seven. So let's look at the positive and the, what they say is negative and the destructiveness of a number seven. And this is what it says about a number seven. It says, dignified, educator, intuitive, love of nature, silent, spiritual, or scientific, and studious. On the negative side, it says aloof, cold, lives in the past, says that they are peculiar, skeptical, sly, and unapproachable. And then on the destructive side, they say they cheat, dishonest, faithless, gossip, sarcastic, evil intent, secret motive. Now, it's just going, all these things right here are just going to show us, to show us that any one of us who does not seek to evolve beyond that root chakra of things, because that's really what that, that, that destructive or that, that negative side is, we're not evolving to move to the higher levels, then we can get stuck down there. It doesn't matter. And I think our, our brother Ross has said this sometimes before, 
it doesn't matter what your number is if you are not evolving, if you're not using, if you're not learning and understanding how and what you can be, then you're going to be stuck somewhere down in the root chakra or the solar plexus, somewhere in there. You're not going to move any further than that. And Tamisha, I did see your, your mute go off. Did you want, okay. Okay, so uh, 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 Brother uh, uh, Rasa, talk about that a little bit about, it doesn't matter, it, you know, explain, unpack a little bit. It doesn't matter what your numbers are. Right. If you're not, you, 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 you can have some uh, uh, very uh, advanced numbers. There are, you, you can have, I would say an example, you can have the 11 or 22, but if you are not using your faculties, your abilities, if you're, if you're a laggard, okay, if you lack follow through, if you don't care, if you're shiftless, and you have those very powerful number of vibrations, it means nothing. Actually, what it does mean is that you're going to have more problems in your life, emotionally, financially, and otherwise. And I see this with, and I hate to dwell on our young folks, but I see this common with many of our young people. Absolutely. And 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 we, you know, and when you Think about this. I mean, you think about your own life. I think about my life from, you know, and I have, I have long-term memory a lot better than short-term. I have a great long-term memory. And I think about what I remember about myself in growing up. If I had someone to teach me about the vibration of numbers that were in me, because see, now these, these numbers, they, these are these patterns of numbers, they're in us, whether we want them to be or not, it's up to us to understand what they are and to grow and evolve because you, you they are in that those patterns belong to you and we all vibrate on a certain pattern on our, our birthday and all those things we vibrate on those patterns so it would be better if we could learn about those things and live a better life be able to detour around some of the things that we need to detour around and 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 and, and become those things that we want to are those people that we want to to become that is that is important so now what we're going to do because we don't have a lot of time left but i do want to have an opportunity for every one of our contributors to say what they want to leave with the audience today today we've talked about those patterns of numbers that that, that exist in each and every one of us and we talked about how they can be better used uh tamisha talked about how we can use the the, the, the darkness and the light um both both of those things are, are significant in our lives so now with that we're going to go to mark thomas and uh, he will Leave, tell the audience what he wants to leave with them as it relates to what we talked about today. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, this is this is a great show again, and I I learned a lot, um, and I was really uh, drawn to the uh, to the tides, to the ten percent investment, and it kind of goes back to what you were just talking about, and all of that. You invest in yourself, and then and then your your numerology and your vibration begins to have power in your life. Uh, you know, and if you don't do that, as like Dr. Um, like Brother Lavelle said, uh, then uh, you, you lose that, or it even becomes a negative thing if you don't if you don't invest in yourself that way. So uh, that's that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you so much. And investing in yourself, meaning taking that ten percent, taking that time to actually meditate. That is an investment in yourself when you do that. Let's go now to Pastor Archie. And what do you want to leave the audience with as soon as you unmute? Um, I'm mute first. <laughs> yeah, uh, this, this was definitely a, a, a great show today and program. Um, wow. <laughs> Me, myself, I, I believe that it, it is, it, it is, it's essential for us as a person uh, to learn what we are, what we are right now as far as evolving in this life. Uh, so we, I don't think we are aware of who we are and what we can accomplish. That is why we stay stagnant in these base numbers. And I, I throw the note out there that, uh, that, that tell people how to get that, that base number, how to calculate that base number based on their date of birth. And But see, we need to know where we are in life. It's not because we're in a bad neighborhood that we can't go forth. It's not 
because you're in the best neighborhood, you can be in the best neighborhood that there is to live in and still be a wreck. But your sphere of life and cycle of life would not tell a lie. You have got to come to understand who you are. You have to wake up. Sometimes I find myself pushing, nogging myself. Look, get on, get get back on path. I hear people say all the time, you know, when I get on the straight and narrow, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, baby. You can't get on the straight and narrow except you understand the path that you are on, the spirit or the or the cycle of life that you are caught up in. You 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 can't. You can't pause. It's impossible. You will go round in a circle, in a circle, in a circle, in a circle. It'll be more than forty years. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's all I did. <laughs> You're know, right. Some people have been roaming around for more than forty years. I love what you just said. Um, you have got to wake up. You have got to study yourself and see where you are, so that you can say, "Oh, now I understand why I keep circling around in this in this circle. I need to move to this next level because I have within me." the possibility and the power to be able to do this. And so I love that. Uh, Tamisha Burgess, what do you want to leave with our audience today? Boy, that was so funny. Uncle Archie, <laughs> you ain't lying. Um, so let me just speak transparently about, you know, just my own journey, um, just really quickly, because we're, you know, we're mentioning to study yourself and know yourself and you know, where, do you, where does that even begin? Like, where do you begin to do that? And so some years ago, um, not that long ago, two, three years ago, quite honestly, I know everybody on this panel closely. Mr. Lavelle was one, and I'm not sure if uh, Sayuel is here, if she's here, and maybe she'll watch this later, but Mr. Lavelle and Sayuel were the people that I reached out to when I was in the darkest places in my life. And I would call Mr. Lavelle or text Mr. Lavelle and say, listen, hey, I'm seeing these numbers. You know, I'm having these, 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 you know, visions and these sort of epiphanies that are coming to me. And he will always make himself available and, and give me the insight that he took years to not just study, but, um, because of his own experiences, he was able to share some very deep revelations with me that were life saving for me. And when I tell you guys and ladies that this darkness that I was in, there was so much coming up for me that I could not Google, that you can't Google, okay? That you need to be connected with people who are on this journey. Those of us who have been chosen to be here, who speak, read, and, and write this language, you can't just go and Google this stuff. And so I'm thankful that I was connected to you, Mr. Lavelle. Thank you for being there and answering my calls and my text messages. And Sayuel, if, you ever, if you're not on here and you listen to this later on, I would reach out to her and I, having these moments of just breakdown and she would invite me to her home and we would sit on the floor and we would meditate and we would scream out literally to the top of our lungs. We would just scream and we would cry and we would dance and then we would laugh and then we would scream and cry some more. You know, so this is what the experiences look like behind closed doors. I know we're talking about these theories and these philosophies, but this is what it looks like when you close those doors and you drop down and you have these breakdowns and you ask questions and you have these dreams and you write them out and you have these epiphanies and you journal and you call on the people you know that you can trust who are on this journey with you, who can help guide you through the, through the darkness. And the people who are here at SRC have been that, that guiding light for me. My mother, I, but we're on the phone and having these conversations. And I say, you know, this is what's been coming up for me. And this is what I know I need to do. And so my own mother on her own, you know, looked at my life, looked at her own life and, and connecting with, with uh, Ms. Lavelle here and, and, and saying, you know, this is what needs to happen. And so my mother, Oh, Misha. Oh, that's okay. It's okay. See, emotion is okay, guys. Emotion can be a good thing. Took the time. Took the time, along with Mr. Lavelle, to develop um, a process that can guide us through wherever we are. 
And so when they talk about having something that can guide you, they took the time to do this. They took the time because they were on their own journeys trying to answer questions for themselves. And so together, um, they took the time to develop something and putting it in development right now for something that everybody can have. And I'm not sure if I can talk about that right now, but when you can't Google it, <laughs> make sure you get connected with the people that can guide you through. So this is what the journey looks like. It's not all peaches and butterflies. This journey to awakening to yourself, when you start asking the, re the very deep questions, be prepared for whatever comes up. And this is what it looks like when you are facing yourself and facing your darkness. This is what it looks like when you're stitching your own cape to save your damn self. I love that, Tamisha. Thank you so much for sharing, sharing, sharing your heart. We're gonna go to now, we're gonna go to Lavelle Rosser. But before Lavelle leaves you with his parting words, and I know we are way over time and I know Mark Thomas wants to probably wring my neck, but Lavelle was one of the first places that Tamisha took me to. I went to when he was in the bookstore before the pandemic and he was teaching about numerology. That was one of the first people that talked to me, took the time for me, showed me, mentored me, and, and caused me, caused something inside me to wake up stronger. And I just want to say, I do appreciate you too as well, uh, Lavelle. And so uh, Brother Rosser, Lavelle, I call him Lavelle. I call him Brother Rosser on the show, but my brother, whom I love, uh, let leave, leave your parting, parting words with our, our panel, with our, our listeners today. Well, well, thank you all, and I, and I love you all too. Uh, I, I just want to keep it short and brief. Uh, to find your purpose, your mission in life through, through numbers, simply take the month that you were born, the number of the month. If it's the 11th month, write down 11. If it's the ninth month, write down nine. If it's the eighth month, write down eight. Then take the day that you were born, okay? The date or the day that you were born. And then the year that you were born. Set it up like we used to do in grade school with the column addition. And so you're gonna add down all the numbers, okay? And you're gonna come up with, a, with probably a four digit number. And then you're going to add across. Okay, so the column addition, you're going to add down, and then you're going to add across and keep reducing the numbers to a single digit. Example, if, uh, if you were born uh, 412, 1990, and you add those numbers down, you're going to come up with the single digit of the number eight. And that will become what is known as your destiny or your life path number, okay? And that will get you started so that you become more aware of the abilities, the faculties, the powers, the know-how and what's expected of you and what you can expect out of life, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Lavelle, for sharing that. And what we will do, hopefully on our next broadcast, we will actually put up a chart and that Lavelle will be able to go through that chart and, and, and explain again exactly what he just, just talked about just then. I think that is important. I saw that Pastor Archie put a note up about we should tell people how to do that. And you're absolutely right, because we're, we're telling them they need to do this, but they're probably wondering, how do we do this then? And so I love that. Thank you so, so, so much. I appreciate every one of you. Thank you to all of our guests, Tiffany Hardy, who's on, Ms. Uh, Karis, uh, Ms. Uh, Moses, who's on today. And also I know Cassandra Jones was on with us and all our other guests, we appreciate you so, so much. And right now, so that I don't get in more trouble, I'm going to pass it <laughs> on to Mark Thomas, who is going to lead us on out of here. <laughs> all right, no problem at all. Great show again. Thank you, everybody. Uh, all of us here with SRC want to thank the audience for joining us today. Our next broadcast is going to be in a week on October 3rd. So please join us at that time uh, for more revealing talk on the Book of Numbers. We really appreciate everyone's patronage. 
and encourage you to email us your questions or comments at shiftingreligiousconcepts at gmail.com. If you're interested in advertising with SRC, please contact us at the same email. Uh, and don't forget that this presentation will be available on YouTube within the next few days. So even if you attended today's program, uh, please go to the Shifting Religious Concepts channel and give us a thumbs up and subscribe. This is one of the few ways we get public attention and it really does help to promote the SRC mission. Uh, if, you're, if you're not subscribed to our newsletter, go to shiftingreligiousconcepts.com forward slash registration and join us. All right, that winds it up for today's broadcast. Once again, watch your email for our Zoom link for uh, October 3rd. In the meantime, we wish everybody peace, health, wisdom, and love, of course. Mm -hmm.